Welcome back to another lecture. Today, I'm going to be working on this other endpoint, right? Now, for the login, all we need is the user sends an email and a password. And if you go to this, let me zoom this a little bit. So for the login, it, it's going to take in just an email and a password, right? And then all we need to do is, you know, grab, grab that email and password here. Confirm that, you know, does this email exist? If it does, you know, compare the password. If it does, then we, we should log the person and we should verify it and, and that's it. So very simple. Let's get started. Now, the first thing is I need to, you know, bring in the params. And I need to always get it from what? The structure, the, use, the request body, request.body, right? And this is supposed to be three dots, not, not two. Then once I have that, the next thing I'm going to do is, you know, get the user record. Let's user equal to, we should get it from, from the user service, this dot user service, right? Dot get user details by field, right? And I'm going to be getting, basically, I'm going to look for email, right? Is there any email that matches param.email? If this user doesn't exist, which I'm going to say, if not user like this, then I should be able to return, return back an error, utility.handled error, right? And I should pass in the response here, just like the utility. All right, so you, now when it comes to login don't tell someone that okay the email doesn't match don't do that don't tell someone that the password is wrong just always tell the person invalid login detail right because if you tell someone that the email doesn't match the person will know that okay now I'm, I'm, I'm i know that i'm trying to hack the email and the email doesn't match so instead you test a different email so you'll just tell the person invalid login detail the person will not know if it's email or if it's password which one is wrong right so now I'm going to use the response code dot not found, right? I think that works. And then, but if we found the user, all we need to do is, you know, compare if the password match. So I'm, I need to say, let is password, password match, right? And I'm going to check await. Then I will call B crit, right? There's a function in B crit called compare. You know, the compare takes in, if you look at what it takes in, it takes in the string value and then the hash value. So, and it compares both of them. So I'm going to pass in the string value, which is the one it passed to us, params.password, right? I don't know why I keep writing double S. Then the second one is actually going to be what is coming from the user, that is what is coming from the database here, right? So I think we have this. Then if, if it works, this guy, Sometimes you just need to check what does this guy return. Returns a promise, right? And that promise is, is going to be resolved as a boolean. So if if it doesn't match, it's going to say false. If it matches, it's actually going to say true. So I'm going to say if not is password match, right? That means it doesn't match. All I just need to do is still do the same thing here. Copy this, paste it here, and say invalid login detail because I don't need to tell the person anything, right? But if it matches, this is where we can now work on something. So I'll create the token, right? And the token basically uses JWT, JWT like this. And I haven't, let me see, I haven't actually brought in the JWT, right? So the JWT is called JSON Web Token. You can use it to generate like um, authorization tokens, right? So I'm going to just import it here. Now, why I'm able to import it is because I think I've already installed it. So JSON Web Token, as you can see here, and I also installed a type. So if you wanted to do this, you should run something like npm install JSON Web Token and then also install the type. But I've done I've done this installation, so I just need to just kill this terminal here. Now let's go back here. I'm going to just bring it in, so I'll say import. Now remember what I said about this importation, always bring in libraries that are external before, you know, yours. So I'm going to say import JWT, JWT from, not from, from 
I'll say JSON web token. So with that, I think I have what we are looking for, right? So I'm going to call sign. And this sign is just a function that takes in a payload, hashes it, right? And gives you back a, you know, a, a token. So first of all, it takes in, you know, the object of the details you want to hash. The first name, because I want to hash the first name, right? And I'm going to say this is going to come from user.firstName. Then I'll probably just take this and kind of duplicate it. So another thing I want to hash is control D. I want to hash the last name, right? And then I also want to, to be able to get the ID. So I should actually have the ID. Then another thing I want to have is the email. So don't go on and hash like literally everything. And also don't add like, you know, important data here like password. Don't do that. It's very dangerous. So I'll also hash the rule. The next thing is going to be the secret or private key. So this is the key you hash with. I already set it on my EMV. So I'm just going to pass in process dot EMV dot, you know, J W T key, right? Underscore key like this. So with that, or well this, this is expected to be, I think it's expected to be like a string or something, but that's probably why it's throwing this error string or undefined. Um, but I'm just going to pass this, let me see, as string, does it work? Yeah, fixes it. Then the next thing I'm going to do is, I would now pass in an object, right? The object shows, you can specify like, how long does it exp does it last before the token expires and the user has to generate another one? That's the most important you know key that you can set here. So I'm just going to set it expires in, and I'll say let's say I want it to expire in 30 days. I'm just going to say 30 d like this. Now this data, the token is one of the things we are going to be returning. So once we are done and everything works perfectly fine, I just need to you know use my utility. I'll say return utility right dot handle success success like this and then handle success takes in the response it takes in in a message so i'll say login successful right and then what else does it take it takes in the data that we are passing so i want to return both the user data and token right that those are the two data i want to return and then I'm going to also return response code dot success like this. So this, this works perfectly fine. So for the error, I'm probably just going to return the same thing I did for register. Oh, the register still has, you know, this. I'll return utility dot handle error like this. And I'm going to say res. Then I'll pass in the error as type error and then i'm going to pass in dot message right and i'm also going to say response code dot server error like this so anything that hits here possibly would be a server error all right so i'm going to come down here as well and i'll do the same so i think we are good to go for this for this endpoint right now, the next thing I'm going to do is try to test this out. Let me say format, format document with pretty code formatter. All right, so pretty kind of formats this. This is different, but we can manage this. It's a little bit much, much stretched, but let's, let's work with that. So if you come to routes, user routes, then we should work on, first of all, we should work on the validation, right? Then second, we can now call this the send point. So I'm just going to take this code. There's not so much to do here. Just take this code, drop it here, right? And this should be login, not capital letter. This is login schema like this. And I'm going to go to my validation endpoint. Just copy this, no stress. You know, uh, for every developer, you should know that Nobody has time to stress, you understand? No, no too much stress. So I would say login like this. 
and then copy this paste it it should work and i'll take away the things i don't need last name and first name are not needed for this endpoint so i think we are good to go let's test this out and see how it goes so if i come here try to send oh i've not started my server so let me start on my server first all right so we have started our server then all we need to do is come here now if you notice you're not going to see any user here because i moved to a new system but we'll first of all create create one so let's go to our code here so when i send a request for the register it should it should create a all right there's an error somewhere i think we are not selecting an environment so i'm going to send this request again okay so we, are, we have created the user and i'm going to just take okay, the password the login is this then come to login so i'm just going to send this request okay so we're able to log in successfully if you notice let me, let me move this out a little bit right so if you notice here we're able to log in successfully and it gives us this token so this token is what we're going to be using from now on and in my environment section you know the dev side i would add something called i'll add user underscore jwt i'll do that and i'll set it to secret right and I'll paste the JWT token. Oh, I did not copy it. So I'm just going to come back to login here. Copy it, right? Copy, come back here, then paste it here. So when we need JWT, we'll definitely refer back to this guy. Save it. Now, another way you could set this is just to right click on this like this and come here and click on user JWT. So the next one we're going to work on is forgot password, right? So how does the forgot password work? Basically, the way the forgot password works is that the first endpoint would just be an endpoint where you send your email. It generates for you a code, right? And then when it generates that code for you, it sends that code to your email. Then you can now reset your password by putting in the code, right? In the reset password endpoint and then putting in a new password, you understand? So. The first thing we need is, you know, just, just like any other endpoint, we always need to get back our params, const params like this. And then I'm going to get back the dot dots request body like this. Then the next thing is to confirm, right? Does this user with this email actually exist? So just like in the login, I'm going to take that code here to confirm if the user actually exists. So I'm going to come here and take this code like this. No stress. Then I'll come down here. So for forgot password, I'll paste it, right? And then all I need to do is change the message, the error message. So if the user doesn't exist, I'm just going to say account does not exist. Now, the way you see me throwing this error message around, some you know big applications, you don't have to manually code this. You probably have like a messages you know file where you enter all this things so that if you want to change it you just go there and change it than having to look for the code you know everywhere once the user actually exists all we need to do is to generate you know a token so i'm going to say const token is equal to and this i would actually say await i will be using a token service i've not created that yet we're going to come back to that but I'm going to say this dot token service, right? This token service would be focused on anything about tokens. And I'm just going to call create forgot password token, right? So when we do that, then all we need to do is just to pass in the email. I'll say params, params dot email like this. So this creates forgot password token would generate like a token for our email matching it to our email and then it will return it here so all we need to do is basically you know use the email service so i'm going to just do something like await email service right then i'll probably just call send um probably just call send forgot password email right i'll just say mail 
makes sense more to use that then you know it's probably just going to take in the the person's email and it's also going to take in the token that we want to send token.code so these things don't exist now at this point right we are going to like you know be able to make some changes here later so outside that we just need to give back a response so i'm going to copy this come back here paste it here like this so i think i'm going to make some corrections on how ptr kind of like breaks down this code to multiple lines so i'm just going to make that i'll create maybe a prettier file to correct that then with this i can just say password password reset code has been sent to your mail right so when we have sent sent back that detail all we just need to do is say okay we don't need to give back any data we just send back like an empty data like this so we are good to go i think this this solves it then when it comes to you know giving back a response i just need to take this like this and and drop back here right and it should work so not to make this video that long i'm actually going to stop here in the next lecture we would actually work on you know making some corrections on the token service and email service and also implement some of these like in the register right for email i'm also going to make corrections in terms of how you know pretty is breaking this particular code into multiple lines so i think that works for now you know in the next lecture we're going to start looking at some of these i think that's it if you have any question just drop on the comments i will reply you as fast as i can once i see it so outside that see you in the next lecture